In today's video, we are going to cover how to control Zoom with QLab, or really any other OSC enabled software using Zoom OSC. Also, be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video where I will cover some limitations that we ran into so you don't make the same mistakes. In one recent project that I worked on, we needed to automate Zoom to control various aspects of the virtual production. In Zoom, as we well know, there are lots of things that you need to manage to keep things running, like muting, unmuting, spotlighting, pinning, and toggling between gallery and speaker view. While you can have a dedicated Zoom person to manage all of these parameters during a presentation, this would quickly get very, very overwhelming. As the number of participants increase or the complexity of the show goes up, you will quickly realize that you need some way to automate these processes. Thankfully, there's an application called Zoom OSC that allows us to control nearly every aspect of Zoom through the OSC protocol. If you are new to OSC or need a refresher on how it works, check out this video here where I cover the basics and get you up to speed on it. Zoom OSC is both Windows and Mac compatible, although there are a few features that only work on one or the other. But for the most part, either operating system will do. I will leave a link to the Zoom OSC website below where you can grab the application and read up on any additional documentation you have. Zoom OSC replaces your normal Zoom application. So in order to join a meeting, you are going to want to enter the meeting information directly into the Zoom OSC application. Once connected, a window will pop up that will function exactly as Zoom would. However, we now have access to a plethora of OSC commands. First, we need to configure the OSC connection. In the Zoom OSC settings window, we can configure some parameters. The transmission IP and port are used for outputting information about the Zoom instance. So if you have a computer that needs to listen to data, this is where you would configure that. More commonly, we are only interested in sending OSC commands to Zoom OSC, and all we need to do is take note of the receiving port, which by default is port 9090, although you can change that to whatever works for you. Now that we have Zoom OSC configured to receive OSC commands, let's hop on over to QLab and see how we can start sending commands. First, we need to configure our network destination in the QLab settings. All we need to do is type in the IP address of the computer that is running Zoom OSC. And in my case, it is use, I'm using localhost since both Zoom OSC and QLab are running on the same computer. Lastly, we need to enter the port number of Zoom OSC, and there we go, we're good to go. Let's now take a look at the OSC structure that Zoom OSC uses. When you download the Zoom OSC application, it also comes with a very nice PDF that outlines all of the commands that you can use. Starting with the overarching OSC structure, any command that we wish to send to Zoom OSC needs to begin with a slash Zoom. To target a user, there are a couple different ways we can do that. We can use the target ID, their username, the user index in gallery view, or their Zoom ID. If you need to send a command to yourself, you can use me. Additionally, you can target groups of users using all targets, panelists, and attendees. Now that we have addressed which target we want to control, let's look at some of the commands that we can send. Since there are lots of possible commands, I'm just going to cover some of the most useful ones I've used. You can control the video and microphone commands using video on, video off, mute, and unmute. Each of these commands also offers a toggle version, which will switch the current value from what it currently is. One command that we used a lot in our last project was the spotlight feature, which highlights a certain user's view for the rest of the people in the meeting. You can use spot, add spot, unspot, toggle spot. Likewise, you can also pin a user instead using pin, add pin, unpin, and toggle pin. You are also able to change the display mode by using set gallery view and set speaker view to toggle these related options as well as switch between the pages while in gallery mode. There are some more high level commands that you can use such as making another user a host, promoting users to panelists, and renaming participants. There are also a plethora of other commands that we can use all the way from screen sharing to changing the device configuration. If you can do it through Zoom, there's probably also a way to do it within Zoom OSC. Let's now take a look at an example of how we would form an entire OSC message that combines the command and the user target. Say we have a user named Travis that wants to spotlight their video for everyone else in the meeting. Since we know their name is Travis, we can start to form the OSC command using the username target, which will look like this. 
we then need to attach the zoom OSC user command that we want to use. And in this example, we will use spot. Lastly, we need to send the data payload over OSC, that is the username we want to target. And with that, when we press go on the queue, Travis's video will be spotlighted for everyone to see. For the most part, we can just switch the command to whatever we want and keep the target the same to do different things. This brings us to some limitations of Zoom OSC. The first main limitation is that while Zoom OSC has a great free version, there are many features that are only available if you pay. Another issue that we run into often when using Zoom OSC is that it is just a wrapper for Zoom, and it cannot do anything that you couldn't already do within Zoom. For example, if you try to unmute a user, it will either require pre-approved consent or the user to manually click accept each time you run the queue. Another thing to watch out for is that the computer running Zoom OSC should either be a co-host or host, or else most of the commands won't work. If you found this video useful, feel free to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to support the channel. And I will see you next time.